Hello cousins near and far. Welcome to my video, how to build your chromosome map to verify your DNA study. Adoptees, welcome. This video is for you too. The chromosome map, that thing everyone keeps mentioning, but you're still a little fuzzy on how to get started. You understand the basic functionality of it. You've seen people use it to great benefit. Let me show you how to make your chromosome map in a few simple steps. So this first step, I'm going to show you two different ways to begin for two different types of people, those that know who their ancestors are and those who don't. Now, disclaimer here, for those that don't know their ancestors, folks that are adopted or have an unknown parent, this is only going to give you a generalization. It will serve as a foundation to build upon as your research continues. For those that know your ancestors, your first task is to gather cousin DNA of known cousins. Cousins, you know absolutely who the most recent common ancestor between you are. You begin the process by dividing. First, dividing them for whether they are on your paternal or maternal side. Then, divide again for whether they come from your paternal grandfather or paternal grandmother's side or your maternal grandfather or maternal grandmother's side. Your goal is to gather four separate cousin groups, one for each of your four grandparents. You can find additional cousins performing a leads method, also known as color clustering. Discuss briefly in my video, two essential processes you should know for genetic genealogy. I'll put the link in the description box below. So for adoptees, in lieu of gathering known cousins, you're going to focus on your leads or color clustering columns. You're not going to want to go beyond the four color columns, which potentially represent your four unknown grandparents. In the event you only have three columns, you may be looking at endogamy between two of the branches. You may only come back with two color columns, which again could indicate endogamy. And if you're unfamiliar with that term, you can view my video, Two Critical Terms to Know for Genetic Genealogy. I'll put the link in the description box below. This could also be a case of no relatives that have tested or an overseas adoption where there's limited DNA testing. The fact is, unless you have a lead, there are too many unknowns to go any further at this point. But you can, at best, begin to understand the admixture or estimated ethnic profile of each color column branch of your tree, be them paternal or maternal. Your ancestors will come. Do not get discouraged. Now for everyone, building off of this understanding, there is a little bit of prep work. And for you adoptees, it could give you some leads. First thing first, you need to access a chromosome browser to compare yourself to each of these matches. So get them into GEDmatch if you can. If they're on Ancestry, you might have to do that. Otherwise, Family Tree DNA, 23andMe, MyHeritage, all these companies offer a built-in chromosome browser. They all work fine. You're going to want to keep comparisons measured at 5 centimorgans or 7 centimorgans. Any lower than 5 centimorgans and you're going to get too far out. For those of you that have a lot of unknowns or just to get an idea of the challenges you might be facing with genetic genealogy, there is a tool on GEDmatch to check if your parents are related. That will give you an idea if there's going to be some crossover or endogamy that could make a cousin appear closer than they should be. Your last bit of homework is to inspect the match trees when possible. See if your known cousins share other common ancestors. You can either pull them from your study or list them as sharing segments from multiple sets of common ancestors. Adoptees, you're going to be scouting match trees for common people, surnames, and locations. Treat everything like a clue because it is. So the next step is to paint your chromosome map. You're going to have 22 lines, one for each of the 22 autosomal chromosomes. And you're going to want two lines for each chromosome, one designated for paternal matches and the other for maternal matches. You can also add an unknown or both line. The both line representing a cousin that is related from both of your parents. Adoptees, your matches would all go in the unknown line to be moved into the other lines as you discover more information. 
You can either build out a template in a spreadsheet, as I've done, or use software such as DNA Painter. The spreadsheet is manual entry and a bit more complicated. DNA Painter, you just copy paste, label, and done. Very simple. So essentially, all you're doing is grouping your cousin clusters or color columns. Indicate whether that cousin is a paternal or maternal cousin, or unknown or both, and label all segments with them as either the most recent common ancestor pair or color column. Depending on the clusters and information I have, I generally label the segments with hyphened names of the most recent common ancestors or the parents of that most recent common ancestor, depending on the cluster of cousins used. Example, my grandmother was Dorothy Berkheyer. I'd label all the cousins stemming from her siblings as Berkheyer Wolf. Berkheyer for her father, Wolf for her mother. Anyone matching those segments will connect somewhere along those two branches. Now, for the descendants of my grandmother and grandfather, I'd label as Taylor Berkheyer, Taylor for my grandfather and Berkheyer for my grandmother, as all these descendants carry DNA from both these lines. And lastly, cousins from my grandfather and his first wife who do not carry my grandmother's DNA. I can label them as just Taylor for my grandfather or Taylor Newman for his parents because these cousins would share both my great-grandfather Taylor and great-grandmother Newman's DNA. So for those of you that can go further back, first to your great-grandparents, then to your second great-grandparents, and so on, you're going to repeat this process, going back one generation at a time. Your matching segments are going to get smaller and smaller as you go back. And if you happen to be in a DNA study for a specific ancestor, the goal to verifying that ancestor is to be able to track that ancestor through the segments of the branches they're on, through the generations. For example, my Native American ancestor, Mary Sweetwater, coupled with admixture, you can see her Native American admixture passed down through the line to me, finding cousin clusters at each generation. Casey Fleming, Casey Farmer, Casey Johnson, Casey Baird, Baird Dance, Baird Taylor, Taylor Newman, my grandfather Taylor, my mother, and then myself. Check out additional videos on screen, as well as other videos you might find helpful in the description box below. Thanks for watching.